For today's cup of coffee, we have something interesting. This is from Mysterious Universe. And this is Nick Redfern's writings. Mm -hmm. So we appreciate Nick. And this is from uh, November the 29th, 2021. And this is entitled Mysterious Woods, a Sinister Military Character and Demonic Possession. And John Keel, too. All right. And it says that John Keel was the author of the acclaimed 1975 book, The Mothman Prophecies, and was someone who had a deep interest in the Men in Black Enigma and who even found himself in their clutches from time to time. Of the many cases that Keel personally investigated, one of the strangest has a significant bearing on the story told in this final chapter. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and, yes. All right. This happened in May of 1967, but its origins were in late 1966. And Jill, Jill, Jill. who's Jill? Jill, Jill is. Jill? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Keel shared in his 1970 book UFOs Operation Trojan Horse, and that has uh, been re-released. So I'm going to be getting a copy of that very soon because okay. I'm, I'm intrigued by it. Now, the location of this particular incident was a field in a rural part of 19th century city of Owatonna, Minnesota. Watana. I am proud of myself on that one. And this also happens to be the home of Kaplan's Woods, which are said to be haunted by multiple disembodied spirits of a terrifying nature. That's okay. going to be a future cup. Loves it. Yeah. And uh, it was late at night when Mrs. Ralph Butler and a friend were staring at a patch of night sky watching a curious display of unidentified bright lights. Without warning, one of the lights dropped at a high speed, and just before it hit the ground, the UFO came to a sudden halt just a few feet above the uh, field. Huh. So that's interesting in itself. Yeah. Without warning, Mrs. Butler's friend, who declined to have her name used by Kill, fell to the ground and went into a trance. In what seemed to be a case of demonic possession, the woman began to speak in a deep, almost robotic fashion. Now, that wouldn't be yeah. terrifying, would it? No, totally. And the voice asked, what is your time cycle? And Ms. Butler replied, a day is approximately 12 hours long and a night is 12 hours long. The strange question and answer session continued for a few more minutes, after which the woman finally came around. She came out of the trance. It says, the light shot away and vanished into the night sky. And for the next few days, whenever the women tried to share the details of their encounter, they suddenly had severe migraines and weakness. What the fuck? Right. We've seen that happen before. Yeah. When memories were trying that didn't want to be... Uh, brought forth. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so that's interesting. Uh, it says there was something else that happened also. During the course of the interview between Mrs. Butler and John Keel, uh, she asked Keel suddenly if he knew anything about mysterious men visiting UFO witnesses, men who looked like military personnel, but who may not have been. And so Keel said, agent, man. and Keel had said yes that he had heard of a few such stories, uh, which he had actually heard had dozens of such on record. Yeah. But he didn't want to risk putting words into Miss Butler's mouth or of influencing her. Mm. So that was, you know, very responsible of him because you know power of suggestion that can screw that's called witness tampering in some ways yeah and so keel sat back and listened as miss butler told her story and it goes back again to may 1967 some six months after the ufo sighting that a major richard french turned up on Ms. Butler's doorstep, identifying himself as a representative of the military and asking questions about flying saucers. Yes. 
And like all men in black, there was something <coughs> not right about Major French. His skin was an odd shade of olive, and his face was extremely pointed, particularly his chin. Yeah. So, a little bit of android or something going on. Yeah, he's sucked up there. <laughs> yeah, really. He spoke English, but his accent was blank. So, yeah. basically, he had, it was like one of those robot things. You know, I had listened to some of those on pronunciations earlier. Uh-huh. Those things are horrible. Yeah. And you had that on your TV and couldn't get it off earlier. Yes. It was. I was asleep and I got woken up because my fat ass rolled onto my remote and changed the settings. And it was reading it to you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, that anyhow. That's the creepiest thing to wake up to is that something speaking in your room and you have no idea what the fuck it is. Yeah. Yeah. And it, and, but it was just that flat, robotic, whatever it was. Yeah. All right. Mr. French was dressed in a suit and black tie rather than a military outfit. And he also, quite out of the blue, as he was sitting there talking to her, said that his stomach was causing him some trouble. This is interesting. Miss Butler offered him some jello, which he quickly declined. The next day, he came back and... Again, he complained about his stomach. So she again offered him a bowl of jello. There's always room for jello. And for a moment or two, Major French stared at the jello and he was trying, it's almost like he was trying to comprehend what it was. Uh huh. And then he stared at the spoon as if he had no understanding of what that was either what the fuck it says he then awkwardly picked up the bowl and proceeded to try and drink the jello now this is like you can do that while it's still liquid but you certainly can't do that easily after it's already gelled i mean unless you want the whole thing to fall on your face but, you well know. that was like that scene from animal house you you have to i'll have to show that to you yeah with the jello <laughs> Ms. Butler went silent and stared in disbelief. Then Major French didn't hang around uh, after he figured out that Ms. Butler had realized that something wasn't quite right with this situation. Mm. And, you know, it says that after he quickly left, he never bothered Ms. Butler again. So if you think you got aliens in your house, I'll from Jello. We need to keep the Jellos handy. I, there was the, listen i understand that jello is kind of weird but like how do you, it's fucking jello how do you not know what it is well if you're from it's another a, it's, planet it's like jiggly it's a jiggly substance it's fun to look at what more do you want how do you how does anyone think that that it that that is unpleasant if you're from another planet it's jiggly every planet has to have some sort of thing that is jiggly on there I don't know that. I don't know. Maybe they were like the rock eaters or something. The rock eaters. Yeah. Jiggly yeah. rocks. Maybe. But uh, there was there was a story. One of the main reasons that I want to buy this about the UFO's Trojan horse by uh, John Keel. There's supposedly a story about uh, a farmer or somebody that was abducted. Uh-huh. And that after he was you know, sent back about him having suddenly four pancakes. That is four pancakes. That story will be worth the price of the book <laughs> in itself. Okay. But there's uh, reading some of the reviews on the book God, that um, lots of interesting stories. I mean, that that's one of those that's so random about the Jello. You know, I don't know that anybody could make that up. No. When somebody's trying to make stories like those up, they have a tendency to get overly elaborate. Overly dramatic. Mm-hmm. Unnecessarily so. Sure. That's sort of like the people... Why is it that Bigfoot has a tendency to be witnessed by, by people who live in trailers? Nothing against people who live in trailers. We know a lot of people who live in trailers. Maybe it's because they're easier to park upside a mountain. It looks to me like a trailer would be very easy for a Bigfoot to destroy if it wanted to. That depends on the trailer. 
So I, I don't know, but that's there was always that. Oh, Bigfoot was peeping in my window, which I have this fear of. I have a fear of anything peeping through the window. Oh, I am like that. I've had this fear since I was little about looking outside my window and something eventually popping up. Right, or looking back. Yeah. That it's just like, that would be horrifying. And because we have cats. It's always there. And <laughs> he who has scared the fuck out of me yeah. before. Well, with him, it's interesting because when it's night, all you can see are those little eyes. That's why it scared the fuck out of me because I can see the rest of the cat. Yeah. Or even when a light hits them, you've got that typical it glows pupil it blinds, thing. Yeah. yeah. So. That was, I don't know that it's, that will probably be a an espresso shot. Yeah. But it's okay. Because I think that all of us deserve an espresso shot every now and then. Before we start in on some of the other topics. Mm. Which, yeah. Like I said, the Vrills. God, those, those <laughs> are just fucked me up. Wait till you hear about the Vrills. That's another one that, uh, there was an X-Files episode at some point that was similar to that because we know that x-files was like i said i don't even know if it was soft disclosure hmm. i think it was just you know full frontal there <laughs> yeah full monty full monty oh god i love that movie it's one of my favorite movies i may watch it. that i've never seen it i'm oh, not it's gonna watch wondrous. it wondrous i'm gonna be in my room it is a wondrous movie it truly is I'm going to watch Team Rocket. <laughs> so I think I will make some Jello and then watch The Full Monty. That sounds like a plan, doesn't it? <laughs> if you've had experiences with paranormal, supernatural me. encounters with UFOs, aliens, cryptids, Jello. Disturbing. There people. used to be a thing that was about Jello wrestling that was before your time. Yeah. I don't want to think about that. We had, being Gen X, we had some really good stuff. I wouldn't say that it was good. Interesting. It was yeah, interesting. But... Yeah. And then you had, like, the dwarf tossing. They took that away from the world, too. <laughs> they did. All kinds of stuff. About the dwarf tossing. Anyhow. That never gets old. If that they, never gets old. If somebody agreed to it. Why? What did you know? As somebody, that was nobody else's business. Uh, yeah. So if you've got local, regional, family myths, legends, what have you, then just send us an email, cup of coffee with scream at gmail dot com. And thank you for sharing laughter, and a cup of coffee, and porch ponderings, and like I said, I think all of us needed a little bit of mirth this weekend. Uh -huh. Yeah, so know that you're loved. Know that um, prayers, as one of the things that we've been doing lots lately. Again, you know, I think everybody's been doing a lot of praying. I've heard people that don't even believe that they're praying. No kidding. Don't know how that works. That or they'll ask for prayer. Mm -hmm. So I think it's the, the times we're in making believers out of a lot of people. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. So, anyhow, have a beautiful, blessed day, and we'll see you on the next cut. What? They already know what to do. <laughs> but that's become your closing spiel. They're going to have to get the, watch the other videos to find out what I said at the end. There you go. <laughs> if you haven't seen any of our videos before, there you go. Oh, yeah, we've got lots of them. We got lots of them. Bye. Click the little bell.